What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Big Baby Jonathan here, man. Welcome to another episode of Big Baby Sports Podcast, man. Uh, man, Lakers have fired Frank Vogel, man. I've been out of the game of podcasting for a minute, man. I've been working like crazy, and I finally have a day off. So let's talk about all the news and notes regarding my Los Angeles Lakers, man. Um, we fired Frank Vogel. Am I surprised? No, I'm not. I told everybody that we we're going to fire him. You know, he was written on the wall that we're going to fire him. But the Lakers did fire him right after the Denver game when we beat Denver the last game of the season. And I feel like that somebody from Frank Vogel's camp told Wojnowski. Because the Lakers would not do that. Lakers organization is class act. They would not do something like that. You know what I mean? They wouldn't do something. Like that. So I feel like it was um, Frank Vogel's agent that linked that story to Wojnowski. You know what I mean? You have to think about that. Coaches have agents too, not just the players. You know, so I think Frank Vogel's agent linked that up, and it is what it is. He's fired, and good luck to you, Frank Vogel. Thank you for everything you did with the Lakers in the last three years. Thank you for the championship. Appreciate you, and good luck to you on your new journey, man. Hell of a coach. You'll find a job in no time, man. But, um, yeah, man, uh, also, too, I was watching the press conferences from yesterday, today, um, about Westbrook. Westbrook says he has not gotten a fair shake or stake here since he's been to L.A. Really, Westbrook? Come on, bro. You had a fair shake. You just don't want to hold accountability for yourself. You know what I mean? This season is one of the be one of the worst seasons in your career. You know what I mean? And it's like, come on, Westbrook, you're better than that. You know, you gotta own up to accountability and say, you know what? I had a bad year. You know what I mean? Everybody on the roster did not have a good year except for LeBron James. Before I get into LeBron James, I'm gonna go to Westbrook. Westbrook, you know, they asked him about Frank Vogel about him firing, and he said, Oh, I don't think Frank Vogel really liked me. I'll know what his deal was. You know, I get along with all my coaches. Let me, let me, let me, let me spit some game to you, bro. You're the one that went at Frank Vogel when he said anybody on this roster can bring up the ball. And you wouldn't know what you said. Give me the ball and get the fuck out of my way. And now it was the written on the wall for the team. Now I'm looking at Russell Westbrook. Nobody should be like, if I was a coach of the Lakers and you told me, give me the ball and get the fuck out of my way, I'd say, you know what, Westbrook? You're benched. Everybody's scared of Westbrook. Like, like, I wouldn't be afraid of Russell Westbrook or LeBron James. You know what I mean? That if I was on the Lakers and not the coachman, do certain things to rub them the wrong way. It is what it is. It's part of the game. You know, Westbrook's sensitive, bro. Westbrook's sensitive as hell about anything. You know, Russell Westbrook. You gonna get butt hurt about that? You don't want the fans getting your head? Come on, bro. I can understand if they say disrespectful things about like. Your family, I get that. I'll be furious too. Someone talk disrespectful to your family. But what I'm saying is, don't let somebody get to you when they say Russell West brick. Just ignore it, bro. Like you, you've been through so much this season, man. As the team is in the hole, and I expect you to get up on out of here. And uh, they also asked uh, Russell Westbrook a question about, um, like, let Russ be Russ. Did you guys think? Did you let? Did you feel like Lakers let you be Russbrook? Um, no, not really. So, he's taking. He's not taking any accountability. I want him out of L.A. There are already rumors about Indiana. We traded him to Indiana for Malcolm Brogdon. Buddy Hill, I would do that trade. And there's also one with Gordon Hayward and the Kelly Oubre for Westbrook. And we give up two first-round picks. Nope, I want to get Terry Rozier. You know what I mean? But, but, but this is still speculation. Season just ended, man. You're going to see a lot of speculation. You know what I mean? And good luck to you, Westbrook, on your new team. And... Good luck to you in your journey, man, because uh, you didn't fit. You didn't know what it takes to be a Los Angeles Lakers. You know what I mean? Um, it's unfortunate, and what really, what really, really made me lose respect for you as a player, bro, you know, when you said you don't have any expectations coming into the season. That would have pissed me the off if I was on your team. You don't have any expectations coming into the year, bro? You don't want to win a championship? Come on, bro. You're better than that, but good luck to you and your team, and um, good luck to you, bro. As far as LeBron James, LeBron James says he's going to, he doesn't have to get surgery on his ankle. He's going to just have to be off of it for four to five weeks. Um, he regrets coming back on that Pacer game. I mean, the Pelican game. He felt like if he would have waited a little bit, one or two more games, they could have been the plan tournament. But um, I predicted we weren't going to make the plan. I predicted coming to the season that we're going to win NBA championship, and we didn't, and it's a failed season. I don't care what anybody says. But LeBron James has our audacity to say it's not a failed season. It's not a failed season, LeBron. Are you, are you kidding me? 
Do you really say that it's not a fail season? How? If you don't win an NBA championship, but maybe you're saying it's not a fail season to you because you accomplished passing Karl Malone in the all-time scoring list and you're like a couple more points away from passing Kareem next season. So it's like, I get what that's coming from, but that's a lot of just like You should never, ever, ever say it's not a fail season when you don't win a championship. If you ask the late great Kobe Bryant that, or Michael Jordan on those Bulls teams, or anybody that won championships, Magic Johnson, James Worthy, Kareem, if you, and if they didn't win a championship and you say it, it's not a fail season, they're going to look at you sideways, bro. But come on, bro. It is a fail season. We had high expectations, and we didn't reach those goals, man. I know AD was injured. Russell Westbrook was... They had chemistry issues, but still, it's a fail season regardless, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you don't want to hold accountability and say, you know what? It's a fail season. Even though I passed Carl Malone. Cool, I'm in the history books, but I want to win the NBA championship. That's how I roll. Now, I'm tired of these players saying it's not a fail season. It's like, it is a fail season, LeBron. Come on, bro. What are you talking about? Like, you have the audacity to say that in a Lakers uniform? Why are people... <laughs> I don't get it. If you'd like your nation, put it in the comment section. Do you feel like what LeBron said was disrespectful about not being a fail season? Or do you feel like it's because he accomplished being on the second all-time scoring list? You know, and also, too, LeBron's considering playing out his contract. In his contract for the Lakers. Um, you need to let the Lakers know if you're going to sign an extension by the summer before a free agency starts. Because if you don't, if you say, I'm landing it right out, I'm going somewhere else, we got to trade you. Point blank period. We want, we want to get value for you. You know, we want to get value for you, bro. You know, we don't want um, to have you leave and leave us high and dry like you did with the Cavaliers, Miami, and then Cleveland again. You know what I mean? We want to get value for you, bro. You know, and also, too, AD injured, was injured this season. And um, should we trade him with the Cavaliers play like AD? No, but we have to pick up the phone and dial it and see what see what the rundown is. You know what I mean? See what the rundown is. See if we can get some value from him. But I think let's going to trade Anthony Davis. No. Looks like we're going to keep him. We're going to ride this thing out, man. We're going to ride this thing out. And Lakers don't stay down too long. When you have a of players like AD and LeBron James, the front office is going to do what's best for them and their their organization and see what they want to do with this roster. You know what I mean? And shout out to Rob Plinka for taking accountability on this season. He said that he did a, did not do a good job as the front office as well. He hold himself accountable. And he said the season was not good from top to bottom. He kept it real. You know, and everybody's talking about it's not Westbrook's fault. It's not Frank Vogel's fault. Bro, stop babying these players. It's Westbrook's fault, LeBron's fault. It's just the whole team in general. We didn't, we didn't win. You know, when you don't win a championship, you know, it's a failed season. I'm tired of people saying it's not. You know, us as Laker fans deserve better. We will get better from this Laker Nation. I know it sucks. I'm freaking pissed off right now that we're not in the playoffs. I know a lot of Laker haters are dancing and excited. And it's like, you know, we got... Clipper clown Darrell posting all the time about the Lakers. It's like, come on, bro. He's so more worried about us than his own damn team. They're going to lose tonight against Minnesota, you know. But, uh, yeah, man. And uh, there's also rumors also, too, before I get up on out of here, that Mark Jackson is a possibility for us, too. You know, there's Mark Jackson, uh, Quinn Snyder, and um, the coach from Toronto. The, new, the up-and-coming coach, you know, Nick Nurse. You know, as far as Mark Jackson out of those three, probably take uh, Mark Jackson because Quinn Snyder says he's less interested in us now. And uh, Toronto head coach um, Nick Nurse is in the contract, so we have to develop a trade. Because Mark Jackson becomes a Los Angeles Lakers coach, he's going to hold these players to come. He's going to say, front office, let me handle it. I'm the coach. Let me do what I need to do. He's going to keep it real. He's not going to shirt He's a motivator. He'll get in your face. He's not afraid of that. And we need a coach that's tough-minded on these players. We had we the soft coach this season. Frank Vogel was soft, keeping it real. The players didn't have, lose trust in him. Players lost trust, and it, it was right on the wall, and it's time for a fresh start. You know, and it's, and for, uh, Frank Vogel, not Frank Vogel, Rob Plinka said he's going to um, not rush the decision yet. They want to get something done by the draft. So the draft, I believe, is in, uh, I think, May, uh, June after the finals. So we got like a couple months before we make a decision, but would it surprise me if Frank, uh, if um, Mark Jackson is the coach? No. Would it surprise me if Jawan Howard's the coach? No, because he's a possibility with him bringing Rajon Rondo in and coaching unit, and, and Lakers did not fire any of Frank Vogel's assistants. 
So it wouldn't surprise me if Phil Handy got an opportunity to coach the team interview. Um, David Fisdale, you know, originally it was supposed to be Jason Kidd. If Jason Kidd would have stayed on the coaching staff this year, we would have probably hired Jason Kidd as a coach already. But uh, he's doing great things in Dallas, and it is what it is. And the Laker Nation, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, man, before I get up on here, it's been a rough, tough season, man, you know. But we stuck through it time and time again, man. You know, I appreciate you guys so much, man. I'm going to be doing some more content on this channel very soon, man. You know, so be on the lookout for that, man. But I just want to give a big shout out to Dan, the Lakers fan, Angry Lakers fan, D6. You know, everybody that was supporting Big Baby Sports Podcast, man. And this season has been also not, like, crazy, too, but also good for my podcast. You know, I had Robert Roy on my channel. I had Dwight Howard on my channel. You know what I mean? And, you know, the marathon continues on his channel. I'm going to continue to put a blood, sweat, and tears into this, you know. Um, I'm going to be back better than ever, you know, in the summer. You know what I mean? But just want to say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart, man. I love you guys. You know, and uh, we'll be back soon, Laker Nation. We'll be back on top. Just a bump in the road. You know, we got, we, we've been through this already. We've been through, you know, not making the playoffs with the, you know, the teams that we had. And we just bounced back. You know, that's all we really, really can do, Laker Nation. But it's, it, it hurts, you know, being a Los Angeles Laker fan as far as, okay, it hurts right now. Because us Laker fans are expecting championships, you know, and it hurts. Like, I just, it just hurts, you know. I got that sore t sour taste in my mouth, but it's okay. It's part of sports. Just learn from it. You know, we'll bounce back. I trust the front office. They're going to do what they say they need to do and uh, what they need to do to turn the season around for next season and go from there, man. But that's going to do it for Big Baby Sports Podcast, man. Make sure you guys like the channel, turn on post notifications, man, and love all you guys, man. Keep supporting Big Baby Sports, man. And, you know, appreciate all you guys from the bottom of my heart, man. Love all you guys that support me, man. Appreciate you guys. One love. Peace out. One love. Go like it, baby. Peace, baby, baby.